Okay, I don't want to make this too complicated. Um, what we're talking about is a near surface thermal enhancement. That's what some uh, researchers call it. I'm an astronomer and a mining engineer, but uh, mining engineers would call this auto compression, adiabatic auto compression. You know, you go up over a hill, it gets cooler. You go down the other side, it gets warmer. You go down in a mine, it gets hotter. The deeper you go, the hotter it gets. That's not the greenhouse effect. It's auto compression. And what's causing it is, okay, gravity's compressing the atmosphere. So the closer the atmosphere uh, gets to the surface, the closer you are to the surface, the denser the atmosphere, the more pressure you've got because of the gravity. And if you've got more atmosphere, more um, amount of atmosphere, like on Venus, for example, then you get a huge pressure. You might have less gravity, like you have on Venus, less gravity than on Earth, but still you get a much bigger auto compression. And you can work out the temperature, near surface temperature. That comes from, once you muck around with the ideal gas law, get rid of a couple of things, stick a couple of things in, like the, like a, the density parameter. So the near surface atmospheric temperature, that's the average planetary near surface temperature. You get that, by, which equals the near surface atmospheric pressure divided by R, which is uh, the gas constant for cubic meter, Kelvin, moles, and so on. And it equals 8.314. So that remains the same times by uh, the near surface atmospheric density in kilograms per cubic meter. And you divide that by uh, the mean molar weight of the troposphere, uh, which on Venus is close, just under 44, which is the mean molar weight of uh, the molar weight of CO2. On Earth, you'll find it's somewhere between nitrogen and oxygen, which is 28 to 32, in between there somewhere. We'll come to that. And you'll find that that is a very accurate way of estimating planetary surface temperatures. You don't need any, any adjustment for greenhouse effect. You don't need any adjustment for insulation. For albedo, they can all be thrown out for this calculation. The temperature comes from just knowing three gas parameters. Average surface pressure, average surface density, mean molar weight of the near surface atmosphere. You need those three gas parameters, you can get the temperature. doesn't work for Mars. Mars' is atmospheric uh, pressure is too low. It only works for planetary atmospheres that are more than 10 kPa on the surface. You've got to work from, in other words, you've got to have a troposphere. Okay, on, on Earth, the, uh, the tropopause is about 10 kPa, and on the surface, we've got, of course, 101.3 kPa. Okay, so what I want to do is try and make this as clear as, I, as possible. Uh, how do we calculate near surface planetary temperatures now? Well, we start with the Stefan Boltzmann black body law. And for Earth, yeah, we work out it's 255 Kelvin, should be the radiating temperature. Then discussions arise about the size or relevance of additional factors like albedo, clouds, ice caps, TSI, greenhouse effect, internal temperature flux, flux cosmic ray effects, and then someone might stand up and so adiabatic auto compression. So it ends up being very complicated. Now we know that atmospheres over 10 kPa have a temperature gradient. We know this from Robinson and Catling, their paper in 2014. If you're interested, you should look at that paper. It shows that any planetary body, it doesn't have to be a planet, as you see Titans there, uh, as soon as the atmospheric pressure reaches 
10 kPa or 0.1 bar if you like, this level here, on Earth it's the tropo tropopause. Then you start to get a pressure induced gradient. That's what we've got here for all the planets. Uranus, Neptune, Titan, Saturn, Jupiter, Earth and Venus. Mercury and Mars are not on here because their atmospheric surface pressure is too low. Okay, let's go one further. For Venus, Earth and Titan, let's calculate these, uh, the surface temperature of these planetary bodies using this formula, the altered ideal gas law. I've thrown out a couple of things and put in a density parameter here, rows, you see there. So we start with the ideal gas law, PV equals NRT, convert to temperature and include a density term, throw out the volume term, which we don't need. Okay, it's hard to imagine atmospheres as different as Venus, Earth and Titan. If you can get a simple formula like this and calculate the surface temperature of those three bodies, boy, you got it made, right? You've made something very complicated into something very simple. So T is the average near surface atmospheric temperature in Kelvin. Okay, P is the near surface atmospheric pressure in kPa, which sits on top of the other parameters. R is the gas constant for cubic meters, Kelvin, moles and kilograms, which is 8.314. You can stick that straight into R. Then you've got rho, which is the density, near surface atmospheric density, average uh, kilograms per cubic meter. And N is the near surface atmospheric mean molecular weight. Okay, so, so if you know those three parameters, three gas parameters, pressure, density, mean molecular weight, that's it. Plug them into this, and you've got the surface, average surface t temperature. That's all you need. You don't need any greenhouse gas, anything. Three gas parameters are needed. Near surface atmospheric pressure in kPa. Near surface atmospheric density in kilograms per cubic meter. Near surface atmospheric mean molecular weight. Stick them into this equation you got the near surface atmospheric temperature. That's how simple it is. Let's stick, stick in the pr three parameters for Venus. Surface pressure is 9200 kPa, stick that up there. Surface temp density of Venus, 65 kilograms per cubic meter, stick that in there. Mean molecular weight is 43.45, as you'd expect, because it's nearly all CO2, and CO2 is 44, so it's just a little bit of nitrogen, which brings it down to 43.45. Work that out. What do you get? You calculate it. Let me know. Tell me how accurate it is. Let's do Earth. Surface pressure of Earth, 101.3 kPa. Surface density. 1.225, there it is. Mean molecular weight, 28.97. I got these figures, properties of Earth, from Wikipedia, and the ones from Venus, from Zazova, 2007. I'm being a bit unfair here. I think I'll have to calculate it. Okay, so we've got our calculator. Okay, we've got our calculator. Uh... 65 divided by 43.45 equals that times by 8.314. Okay. 12.437. divided by... 12.437. This is the surface temperature of Venus in Kelvin. 739.7. 739.7. How accurate is that? Let me know. Here's Earth. 
Work that out with the calculator, it comes out at 288.6 Kelvin. Let's do Titan. Now Titan is the only moon with a thick atmosphere. It's one and a half times the density of Earth uh, at, at uh, surface or ground level. I got these properties from these people here. Surface pressure 146.7 kPa. Density 5.25 kilograms per cubic meter. Mean molecular weight 28. Stick those in. 94.1 Kelvin. Let me know how accurate that is for Titan. 94 Kelvin. Jupiter. Now for the giant planets, we're using what we call a surface and in inverted commas pressure. In other words, we're taking the atmospheric pressure of Earth and throwing it over to the giant planets because they haven't got a surface. So they're just gas balls of bloody gas. So they've got no surface. So we're going to make them a surface at one atmosphere, 101.3 kPa. And the density at that pressure is there, 0.16 kilograms per cubic meter. Mean molecular weight of the Jovian atmosphere, 2.2. Sticking those numbers, you get 167 Kelvin at the pressure at one atmosphere. So tell me how accurate that is. Here's Saturn. Same thing, bung in the numbers, 132 Kelvin. Let me know how accurate that is. These properties are from NASA fact sheet this year's. Uranus, stick in the numbers, 76 Kelvin at one atmosphere. Let me know, are these accurate? Neptune, stick in the numbers. Now you got, I don't know why, but uh, NASA have given us two molecular weights. For Neptune, so I've worked out both of them, and so the somewhere between 68 and 72 Kelvin. The temperature at one atmosphere in Neptune is actually 72 Kelvin, so it's exactly between. What does all this mean? What does it mean? Okay, it means either the ideal gas law is correct, or the 33 centigrade greenhouse gas effect is correct. Both cannot be correct. Okay, my money is on the ideal gas law, I'll tell you right now. If the ideal gas law is correct, then it means that convection and adiabatic order compression determine surface atmospheric temperatures on all planetary bodies that are over 10 kPa. It means that radiative transfers of energy only dominate in the part of the atmosphere that is less than 10 kPa, in other words, for Earth above the tropopause. It means that near surface atmospheric temperatures are not determined by a greenhouse effect either on Earth or anywhere else. In astronomy, we, we call this a Kelvin Helm Helmholtz uh, contraction. That's how stars form. You know, when a large amount of gas compresses due to gravity in space, it goes up to millions of degrees. It only goes to 33 degrees on Earth because there's just a tiny amount of gas involved. But, it, but you always get that auto compression anywhere over 10 kPa. Anywhere. As you've seen from the, uh, the paper I, I referenced earlier. Here are the references. What do you reckon? Is the CO2 story kaput? I think it is. 